Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to Let's Try some Chroma Squad. I get emailed a lot of games to test out for YouTube here, and a lot of them I look at them and I think, nah, this isn't going to be particularly good, and usually that is true. Now, Chroma Squad is an exception. I looked at this game and I thought, I don't think this is going to be particularly good, is it? And then I started playing it, and I was really, really entertained. Uh, it is a very, very funny sort of parody of the sort of Power Rangers-esque kind of thing. Um, with some tactical combat thrown in. Except you're not actually playing as the Power Ranger type people themselves. In this case, the, the sort of Chroma Rangers or, or whatever you want to call them in here. Um, I, what did I call them? The uh, the Chroma Quiller? Power Quillers is what I called my group here, the Power Quillers. You're not really playing as, as those superheroes per se. What you're actually running is a studio running a show about this sort of power squad going on here. And you have to spend some amount of time managing your studio, purchasing new costumes, uh, upgrading your studio itself, doing that sort of thing. And then you're actually going to be running the show. Every one of the battles that you're going to be run is sort of an episode in this program. Uh, here, this video here represents uh, the very start of the game. Here, we're still in season one. We've got to run, I think it's four episodes, and then we have to do a finale. And we have to make sure that we have above zero fans. We, can't, we have to make sure we're not at negative fans by the, uh, by the end of this first season, otherwise we will be canceled. You can see here I'm running through some of my various studio upgrades. Um, I've also looked at some of the equipment, and in a moment here, I think I'm gonna go to the Studio Options tab, which is one of the things that I was the most entertained about because you can really give your studio quite a bit more personality. There's gonna be some more upgrades down the road as well. You can see here we can rename the studio, our squad, and various other effects that come up during gameplay, and that actually does get changed. And uh, I kind of wish I'd uh, made a couple more changes than I did, but I got a pretty good little set in there. So the actual gameplay itself is tactical combat, that is to say, you know, you've got sort of a, a square grid, you've got your units, the enemy's got their units, and you each take turns and you move your units, you've got a certain amount of squares you can move, um, and the way the combat works here is you can move, you can make your normal move, your full movement, number of squares, and then after that, you can attack someone who might be adjacent to you, or you can move a second time. If you do the, the double move, then you don't get to attack at the end of it. And you know, that's pretty standard, but there's actually a really good teamwork mode in here. So what you can do is you can move up to your normal move, then hit the teamwork button, at which point your turn ends, or that character's turn ends. But that character makes himself available to be used as sort of like a trampoline. Other characters can run up to your, your teamwork person, and then get flung up into the air, and move much further than they could normally do and still attack. Alternatively, if you're in teamwork mode adjacent to an enemy uh, and one of your other teammates runs up and attacks the enemy, you'll actually do a double attack that will be even more effective than normal. You can see here I'm about to start my first episode where I'm going to be fighting uh, Boxing Box Bot. It's a two-part episode. Um, part one, we're going to have to perform three team acrobatic maneuvers and not end with anyone under 50%. So what are these director's instructions? Well, to make the show more dramatic, for every scene, the, the director will give us certain criteria to meet. And if we meet those criteria, we will get more audience. Every episode has a maximum amount of audience that you can gain. I can't remember this episode here. We just saw it on the last screen was 1,500 or 2,000 or something like that. That's the maximum number of audience we can possibly gain. If we fulfill all of the director's um, criteria, plus perform some extra cool like team attacks and um, acrobatic attacks, then we'll get even more audience and get even more attention. So there's some nice little dialogue here. Everything's like really a spoof of the sort of genre of these like Power Rangers type things, the poorly translated narrators um, and that sort of jazz and really, really, really cheesy opponents. These powerful teenagers are the last hope of humanity. Yes, of course we are. So we've got our five person squad. Um, there are five different roles. There's the lead, the assault, the scout, the assist and the, the techie. Each one of them have slightly different modifiers that affect them in combat. Um, in particular, the assist can uh, starts off with the ability to heal with the heal dukin fireball attack. I guess it's some sort of heal ball or something like that. Here you can see the uh, uh, the squirrel alien monsters. Oh, it's so scary! Are going to come out and begin to attack us. And in this first scene, I've got to perform three acrobatic attacks and yeah, and end with 50% health. And actually, I'm going to fail to keep myself above 50% health here. So I'll get some of the um, audience bonus, but not all of it. This is my first real fight in this game, so I'm still learning it. Here you can see uh, I've got a range. There's my upvote transformation. However, I need more audience to be able to go and do my upvote transformation. So here I'm just going to run up and begin the attack as soon as I click the button. There it is. 
So when my character Wind is going to go and perform quite a good move, get the squirrel below half health, which is pretty good. Um, Lee here can also go and complete the attack in one go. But instead of doing that, I'm going to go into teamwork mode because I want to finish the kill. Unfortunately, as it turns out, my lead doesn't have quite enough movement uh, to finish the job. I hadn't realized he had such poor movement. In the second fight um, that we do, I'm going to use him to much greater effect with his limited motion. And this is because of the, um, the character that I chose. There you can see a, a double attack get completed that dealt a ton of damage. The combat itself is relatively simple, but has enough options to keep it interesting. Uh, later on, you'll see me go and do the transformation into the upvote mode, at which point we'll be able to... Um uh, we'll have a few extra combat actions as well as we can use our weapons um, and some special attacks and that sort of thing. But uh, I didn't have enough audience to trigger it in this particular context here. You can see the audience meter at the top. It looks like 2800 is actually the maximum amount of audience that I can get in this particular encounter. I guess because it's a two-parter. So that makes some amount of sense. I think my... There we go. There's the acrobatic assault right there. So I use my leader to give me extra movement, which also gives us more damage, plus follow up on a double attack. An assisting character, a team working character, can give people um, any number of acrobatic attacks uh, in one turn. He can assist as many people as possible to do an acrobatic move. However, if he does a team-based attack, that will end his teamwork phase. So you want to make all your acrobatic moves first. You can see here I'm working hard to get my three team acrobatics down. But unfortunately, because of, you know, this being my first real fight here, I will take a little bit too much damage. Now, I think that if I had gone and used my... Uh, what are they called? The default ability is called Chromatize, but I renamed it to Upvote. If I had gone and used it, then I would have been able to heal my characters above 50%, and I think still gotten the full um, uh, the, the full director's instructions bonus. But, you know, live and learn, I suppose. There you go, another acrobatic move. Basically, I'm not really using the distance in this one. I'm mostly just using it to complete um, the director's challenge. Plus, you do get a little bit of bonus damage, although I suppose if we were just um, using the extra character to do an actual attack instead of set up acrobatics, that'd be better. You can see here I set up for another um, another teamwork. And this one's actually useful here, because I've done my goal. But by doing this, I got a second person in position for a double attack, and I was able to guarantee that squirrel boss went down. I think in a moment here, we'll be going to the second phase of this encounter, and we'll be showing off the upvote, or chromatize. There we go. We finished part one, but only got half of it down there. And here, we're about to, as soon as my turn, we're going to go ahead and upvote ourselves for the classic transformation into our costumes. Doesn't matter who I pick, the whole team should go. Are we going to move first? Maybe. My lead here can actually set up some acrobatic attacks, despite his, uh, his short... Um, ability. There we go, we're getting in position. Time to get the animation going on. Transformation. Lights, camera, chromatize. I forgot to change that key phrase, unfortunately. I really should have said uh, something else. Boom! Now we're in costume. And we've got our extra abilities down here. We've got uh, the sword. This is on the, the my lead. I've got a sword and also a lasso. We can pull, pull people forward. It's also a free action. There's a cooldown, but it is a free action. Let's pull it in there. Um, now we're all set up. One of the other things you can do is the finishing move. If any, your opponent is weakened slightly, you have four teammates adjacent with teamwork mode and you use your fifth and final teammate to deal the killing blow and your entire squad attacks simultaneously. This is my down vote attack, I called it. And basically, we're just going to hit the enemy simultaneously, causing him to explode in classic Power Rangers-esque fashion. Boom. This is also my director's instructions. I mean, you're highly incentivized to always kill the last boss with finishing move, because you'll always get some bonus, but it's especially prevalent when... Uh, <laughs> I've been recycled. When um, the boss is... Uh, when, when it's, it's especially useful when you get a director's instructions for it. Yes, and there's some nefarious plot going on here with the Transit Mancer, but we'll have to follow up on that afterwards. Mwahahaha. All right, here's here's the next encounter over here. Um, this one here I want to show off because the boss has got a few interesting moves. Here you can see I'm using the acrobatic maneuvers a little bit more effectively to get some range. I actually don't have a criteria to make acrobatics, but you see I've got my Gray Ranger in position to really be able to boost my other characters in range of other enemies. And in particular, what I'm trying to do here is I've got to set up so that my lead attacks the boss three times before we finish the fight. Interestingly enough, in this fight, I don't actually need to defeat the minions. All I have to do is defeat the boss, but before I defeat the boss, if I want to follow the director's instructions, I'm going to have to hit the boss with my lead three times. And unfortunately, if you recall, my lead only has a movement range of three. So I really have to keep using this gray ranger here to use his teamwork so that my very slow and ponderous lead 
can make these acrobatic attacks and hit the boss enough times to actually get the credit for everything. But this great ranger is actually in a great position to really um, push a lot of people into the right position. So I really like this teamwork component. I've, I haven't, I mean, it's possible that other games have used it, but I don't play a lot of these tactical combat games, and I personally haven't seen this before, but I love the positional aspect. And uh, I would really like to see more games do something like this. I could especially see it in sort of a multiplayer kind of um, situation. It'd be very tense. So here I think we're going to be doing a triple attack against the squirrel. You bet that's going to hurt. I think I only need a double attack to actually finish them off, but what the hell. We're also picking up some items here to do a little bit of crafting, which is always fun. Just a costume wound. So you pick up uh, cotton and duct tape and various things like that. You can see here that boss's barrel roll attack was particularly bad. We are in finish at range, although I have not finished hitting the boss with my lead three times yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to use the Green Ranger mostly to help my lead be able to get into position despite being very slow. We're going to go to the other side here. Because the boss is already in finish at range, there's no need for me to do a, a double or triple attack on the boss to do extra damage. As long as I can get all my people adjacent to the boss for teamwork, we'll be able to finish it in one blow now that uh, I've met my director's criteria. Just waiting long enough to do that. My pink ranger there, when she goes into teamwork mode and does her pose, she actually heals all adjacent um, allies at the same time, which is really convenient. I think she only does that when she's in costume mode, though. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. There you go. A bit of a jump. A bit more damage. Oof. Didn't quite finish it off, but that's okay. What's important here is that I arranged it so that all four... Or so that four of my characters are going to be within range... Well, I suppose all five of my characters are going to be within range to attack. Which means on this turn, I can simply move up and set up for the assist. Which I think I'm going to do immediately. Unless I'm wrong. I think I'm, I'm just checking everyone's movement range. It's going to be fine. Yeah. We're just going to get everyone adjacent to the boss turn on the teamwork, and then the last person is going to have to do the final attack. Teamwork there, and one more. Anyway, I was really blown away by the sense of humor and the sort of novel gameplay. The tactical combat is actually fun, and I'm someone who doesn't often like a lot of tactical combat like that, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought there was enough options, and it was fast-paced as well. Um, and then the sort of metagame of managing your um, your TV studio was really entertaining. Plus, just, just the dialogue, the text, the storyline, there's some other competing studio that you've got to worry about. I definitely recommend keeping an eye on this title. Um, I think it's not technically released at the time I'm recording this. Let me double-check the... Uh, the release date. April 30th is the official release date. It is available on Steam as well as a few other websites. Check the links down below where you can download it. Uh, I don't remember if I do anything else at the end here. You can see oh, my audience from the episode gets converted into money and then also some of them get converted into long-term fans. I'm gonna have, I had 65 left uh, from the last episode. I just gained 44 here. Last episode was a two-parter. Uh, this one here is only a one-parter, so a little fewer fans, although pretty good overall get some tweets about things, and there you go. So I have 109 permanent fans, or at least long-term fans, 307 bucks. I'm checking my crafting here. Last time around I crafted, I think I crafted some boots maybe for people. Here I'm debating building a clay gun, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it aside for now and maybe get some more money later on. Um, let's see, there's some studio upgrades, some shopping. Yeah, I've got some extra special foam suits already equipped on my people. They can even raise their arms over their heads, amazing. And then we get a mysterious email here from Wendell telling me the Cerebro thing in the middle of my studio may not be trusted. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, that is my very quick let's uh, try uh, first impressions of uh, Chroma Squad. And I was relatively impressed. I don't think we'll be doing a let's play just because our schedule is pretty full right now. But uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.